Good day. As promised, uh, uh, I will be doing a, uh, a short uh, discussion on the topic of the reload timers. And since that uh, this topic would be included in the midterm exam, and I failed to uh, discuss this live on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, class, so therefore I'm making this video for you to uh, for you to learn and uh, also uh, get to know the uh, the reload timer uh, of the uh, Fujitsu MB90F387S. The reload timer is uh, one of the avail uh, available timers in the uh, Fujitsu MB90F387S microcontroller unit, and it's a 600-bit timer. But this time, it's it's a countdown timer. It's uh, it's it's opposite the uh, the 16-bit timer, the 16-bit free run timer of the uh, input output timer, and the uh, the under uh, the underflow uh, can generate an interrupt uh, if uh, it's enabled. And the good thing about the reload timer is that uh, you can reload a specific value uh, upon uh, uh, underflow or an external trigger. So it means that uh, when the timer uh, expires or it goes into underflow or there is an external trigger, the timer would be reloaded with a uh, preset uh, value. And then the counter starts to count down from that uh, reloaded value. That's why it's called a reload timer. Now the uh, Reload timer, um, you can basically uh, uh, select the count clock from the three internal clocks and external event clocks. So the, this is this is the uh, 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 I think one of the timers that it, it allows external clocks uh, to drive the uh, uh, the timer. And a software trigger or an external trigger can be uh, selected as the uh, start trigger of the uh, the timer and the timer uh, the timer 16 bit uh, register or other known uh, or also known as TMR it underflows and as I've said earlier it can uh, generate an underflow interrupt to the CPU and also if the TMR underflows uh, we can select either one shot mode and uh, for stopping the timer uh, count or the reload mode to reload a 16-bit uh, reload value stored at register TMRLR and this 16-bit would be reloaded to the timer depending on the configuration either um, reload through underflow or reload via an external uh, trigger and the reload timer has two channels that we can use uh, we have channel 0 and uh, channel 1 so the uh, operation of the reload timer is uh, uh, actually uh, we can have an internal clock or an event count uh, or external uh, clock to power or to, uh, to drive the, uh, the timer. And for both internal and uh, external, um, we could do uh, during underflow, it could do one shot mode or reload mode. One shot mode means is that after the timer underflows, the timer basically just stops. The reload mode, when the timer underflows, the reload value from register TM, TMLR would be loaded to the, uh, to the timer, and then the timer which has to count back again, to count down again until it overflows. Now the internal clock mode, um, the 16-bit reload timer decrements its synchronization with the internal clock, and we can select up to uh, three count clock cycles. And the start trigger sets an edge detection for a software trigger or an external trigger, so we can uh, start the uh, timer by triggering it via software or um, triggering it using an external trigger. In the event count mode. Uh, the reload timer decrements and uh, synchronization with the edge detection of an external event clock 
which is connected to the uh, TIN pin. And the uh, software trigger is selected as start trigger. And a 16 bit reload timer can uh, also be used as an interval timer using a fixed cycle of the external clock. Now, in this, uh, in this uh, class and course at the laboratory, so we're going to be using only the, uh, the internal clock mode, meaning that we're going to be using the internal clock mode to drive the uh, reload timer or the 16 bit uh, the timer. So here are, or here's the uh, block diagram of the reload uh, timer. So as you can see, As you can see, the uh, uh, the timer is uh, connected uh, to the 16-bit uh, reload register TMRLR, the top, and uh, there is the reload signal. So it means that uh, if there is a if the operation is uh, if the mode of operation is reload, therefore it sends or it tells the uh, TMRLR or the uh, uh, 16 bit reload register to load uh, its value to the, uh, the reload timer, which is uh, TMR. And the register controlling the reload timer is what is the uh, timer control status register or TMSCR. TM, uh, TMCSR uh, uh, and uh, it is basically a 16 bit register. And with the uh, uh, with the bits, uh, we have TRG, CNTE, UF, INTE, RELD, OUTL, OUTE, MOD0, MOD1, MOD2, CSL0, CSL1. Now for the details of the description of these bits, please refer to the uh, hardware manual. And uh, 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 read through the uh, definition of these bits so that we can uh, configure the... Uh, the reload timer uh, properly. Now, bits I and T E and U F, if uh, are actually uh, involved with the uh, generation uh, of the interrupts upon the timer underflow. I and T is the bit where you can, uh, where we can uh, enable the uh, interrupt while the UF or the underflow flag is automatically set to one when an underflow uh, occurs in the timer. So if both INTE and UF are one, so meaning that the interrupt is enabled and there's an overflow, therefore these two uh, bits here is connected to an AND gate which uh, generates the uh, interrupt request to the CPU. So this is the, uh, the timer control status registers and uh, this is the uh, high byte and the high byte contains the uh, um, contains uh, CSL zero, CSL one, and mod two, mod one, and mod zero. So basically, these are the bits that you are to select, you are to set up uh, to uh, to enable the uh, the trigger, uh, the trigger input or the gate input, and also select the uh, three uh, clock intervals that uh, you can uh, select. Now, upon reset, these values of these bits are zero, zero, uh, are zeros. So therefore, uh, upon reset, uh, the count clock selected for CSL0, CSL1 is 2 to the power of 1 times T, where T is your uh, machine cycle. And uh, uh, for mod 2, mod 1, mod 0, and it's uh, uh, basically, uh, it's uh, there's no trigger, so there's a trigger disabled. So if you use a uh, if you use an external trigger, then select the uh, the proper uh, uh, trigger selection. So you have rising edge, falling edge, or in both uh, uh, edges. Okay. Now the lower half of uh, the timer. Uh, uh, control status register contains the uh, contains uh, uh, bit number six. So we have out e. So you can uh, output the uh, 
uh, uh, you have you have this uh, T TLT or the timer output if you want to to uh, output the uh, the timer this particular pin so set this to one otherwise if it is still a general purpose IO and set it to zero then we have the one shot mode or reload mode well if you want reload mode set that to one and uh, one shot mode set that to zero and the reload select bit so you have either one shot mode or reload mode well bits number four um, and five so it's actually related so if you select uh, if you select uh, uh, one shot mode so you, for one shot modes you have this high rectangular wave output during counting and uh, if it's one that's low rectangular wave output during counting and and for reload mode so for out l so it's low toggle output at starting reload timer and high toggle output starting reload timer so basically you can output uh, signals from uh, two out l okay which is uh, which is actually a uh, uh, one of the gpio alternate functions of the uh, gpio pins and uh, bit number three um, you can enable the interrupt underflow uh, underflow interrupt or disable it the flags of course uh, you set that to zero you clear that uh, to zero and it will be, be automatically set to one when the underflow is uh, encountered and then uh, we have also the uh, CMT if you want to disable the timer operation and uh, if set it to one the timer is enabled and it would wait for uh, start trigger and uh, TRG uh, if zero it's no effect if you write zero on it and after uh, you set that to one when after uh, uh, reloading it starts counting and it's it, it's it's basically uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the best features of reload timer is that uh, after you reload the value you can you can allow the counter to start uh, counting uh, after after the value has been uh, reloaded so I'm going to show you uh, how uh, reload uh, works first with an external trigger by uh, TIN0 or TIN1 so we have uh, you have uh, the reload register there that's the value that we are going to reload to the 16-bit timer so uh, the 16-bit timer assuming that uh, uh, there's an external trigger and the 16-bit timer is overloaded uh, over, uh, yeah, uh, overwritten and it will start the count to start from that uh, reloaded value now for underflow uh, conditions, so we have also uh, uh, the real uh, we have a system bit timer, and it, it would count down until it uh, reaches uh, underflow, and then the reload register would be uh, the, the reload register would override the value of the system bit timer, and the timer again would start to count down from that value. That's how the reload uh, register works. And in this case, we have an example, so. Considering an LED connected to P10 on the uh, on the mb 90 f 387 s and the requirement here is that it would turn on for about 0.75 seconds and turns off for about 25 se 0.75 seconds and the cycle continues on and on and on. And we will use the 16 minute reload timer to to create a, a a timing system for turning on and turning off the LED. And using the underflow interrupt, uh, we will try to achieve a 0.75 second uh, interval. Now, we have to somehow um, calculate, uh, because we know that if we're going to, uh, to, to use the uh, underflow interrupt, somehow we have to determine how many counts it takes using a 16 bit uh, timer. 16-bit uh, reload timer to generate an exact or approximately or very close to the to, to 0.75 seconds. So in this case, we know that the timeout on and off period is uh, 0.75s. And assuming that we're going to be using the third uh, the third uh, clock interval, that's two to the five two to the power five uh, t, uh, which would give us uh, 32 times uh, 1 over 2 times 10 to the power of 6 uh, seconds that would give us uh, 
16.0 microseconds. So that, that's the time it takes to to uh, decrement the uh, to uh, decrement the uh, the counter. Now, knowing that the time it takes for us to turn on and off the LED is 0.75 seconds, so we divide 0.75 seconds divided by 16.0 times 10 to the negative 6, or 16 microseconds, and the total is 46,875 counts. So, there, so therefore, we will use this as our reload value. So every time the, the uh, reload uh, timer underflows, the value of 46,875 would be reloaded to the timer, the timer would start again counting from that value. So each time there's an underflow, with from that counting from that value, it would generate an interrupt, and basically each of the interrupt or every interrupt that has been uh, uh, generated would be exactly 0.75 seconds from each other when the timer uh, underflows. So here is the, uh, uh, the sample code, and if you want to know um, again, if you want to know the details of uh, uh, the bit settings here, so please refer to the uh, hardware manual. And uh, I would like to point out uh, uh, the third or fourth uh, statement there. So that's IO TMR um, zero uh, is equal to 46,875. Now this is actually what we have. That is the value that we have calculated earlier. That uh, that is required. The number of counts required to arrive to achieve a 0.75 second uh, timeout. So therefore, we will set that as our reload uh, value. Therefore, we put that at the reload register. Now remember, there are two uh, uh, timers, uh, two, two reload timers, so timer uh, zero and timer one. So therefore, we're gonna select the first timer, timer zero, and assign the value of 46,875. While, well, uh, if we're using timer zero, so it, it, we have also to, uh, to select the appropriate uh, interrupt control registers. And for this case, so we have the uh, interrupt control register 03, uh, which controls the uh, interrupt priority of uh, the uh, underflow interrupt of timer uh, zero. And the control timer control register should be TMSR, TMSCR zero, and that corresponds also to the timer zero. If you're using timer one, then that should be TMSCR one, and also the timer, the reload register should be TMR1. Okay, so the uh, interrupt service routine basically starts with clearing the interrupt flag, and we just have to uh, toggle the toggle the uh, I/O port uh, P10 to uh, to one. Uh, to uh, on or off, okay. So basically, you're just turning it on every turn. Turn it on. And so, point seventy five seconds after you, you turn it off, then turn it on again, and so on and so forth. Now, the bottom part. So we have also the uh, interrupt table. So the interrupt number of the reload interrupt is number seventeen. So make sure to include this as part of the interrupt uh, interrupt uh, vector table, so that every time uh, the underflow interrupt occurs, the, the function interrupt, in, the, the interrupt service routine uh, reload int will be executed. So basically that's the end of uh, our short discussion on uh, reload timers and uh, I hope that uh, you have been enlightened about this uh, timer in the uh, Fujitsu MP9KF387S. But if things are not clear in this discussion, so please uh, post your uh, questions or inquiries to our discussion board in our, uh, our website and then again uh, uh, the materials all the materials are there um, particularly for uh, the reload timer and, and, and please refer to the hardware manual and everything is there the reload timer the input output timer and the time base uh, uh, time okay so uh, I wish you good luck in your midterm exam Thank you and uh, have a good day.